In this video, we're going to look at how we can assign rotation to our members about their local coordinate system and also assign moment releases. And again, it may be advantageous for us to be able to control the orientation of a member relative to its local x-axis. For example, if we didn't want to have the top flange uh, top of the flanges, sorry, aligned with a specific axis, we can always change that. And for moment releases, well, it's important for us to be able to control how a member transfers moments and forces to its counterparts. So this gives us the option to do that. So for this example, we're going to look at uh, the same 3D model that we were working on earlier. And I'm actually going to start by assigning a section property. So right now, we don't have any sections assigned to our model. But if I right click on the section property tool, I'm just going to grab an arbitrary steel section out of the steel database. So it's going to be an I-beam. And I'll just look for a W310 by 39, or 360 by 39. I'll press Add to to add it to my model and press OK. And I'll just give it a color so it pops a little bit more. So we have these red colors assigned to this section. Now I can render my model by clicking on this Render Model button. It's a green I-beam at the status bar. I can right click on this tool as well. And it gives me the dialog that will allow me to configure the rendering properties. So I can say Render Model. And with this, I can also assign a specific transparency. I'm going to go with about 75%. And we have a length shrink factor, which basically will shrink the member's rendering from the end of each member, just so we don't have overlaps in the rendering of the flanges and webs. Uh, I'm going to use a value of 0.8, but you can use whatever you like. And if we zoom in now, I'll use this zoom window tool. We can see the orientation of the, uh, of the top and bottom flanges, the webs, and so on. Now, using this member axis orientation tool, we can also display the local x, y, and z axes as we've done before. And we can see which direction those are. And it might help if we just untoggle our rendering for now. Now, if we want to change the orientation, perhaps of our columns, like let's say that I want to select just my vertical members. Uh, I'm going to go with just the level one columns for now. I can change the orientation of these members by going into the member orientation angle and entering a value, I'm going to say 90 degrees. So right now, we can see that the web is aligned with the x-axis. But if I enter 90 degrees here, and I press OK, and just click and drag my mouse around the entire model, we can see that now we've rotated this so that the y-axis of my coordinate system is rotated 90 degrees. Uh, my x-axis is still going up and down. but uh, everything is rotated 90 degrees about the local x-axis. And the local z-axis is going to be pointing towards the top flange of my beam. So this has rotated the orientation of this I-beam. And that will change which direction is the strong versus weak direction. Now, if I wanted to do this to my entire set of columns all at once, rather than just the bottom floor, I could do that quite easily. I can just go to Unselect All, and then go to the Select menu, and say Select Special. And I'm just going to select the verticals. The vertical members, and there's a tolerance that we can specify what is constituting a vertical member. And I'll press OK, and it's only selecting these vertical members. Then I can go back into this Member Axis Orientation tool, Use a member orientation angle and just assign that to all of the members now, and you can see they're 90 degrees. Something to note is that this didn't apply a further 90 degrees of rotation to the bottom floor members, which were already rotated. This is basically an absolute rotation, not an incremental rotation. So 90 degrees is what the orientation of the coordinate system will be relative to the default. I'm going to turn off my rendering for now. And another thing to note is that our, currently our frame is completely rigid, so all the member connections are rotationally fixed. And if we want to release the ends of the beams in the model, 
uh, the simple non-rigid connections, we could do that as well. So I'm just going to only select the beams. And to do that, I could do that in a number of different ways, but I'll use the same method that I described earlier, going to Select, Special, and this time I'll uncheck verticals and check horizontals. So I only have the horizontal members selected. And I'm going to select the Member Release tool. The Member Release tool here gives me three different options for uh, releasing degrees of freedom relative to the member's local coordinate system. We know that the local x-axis is the direction or the longitudinal axis, so that's not checked by default because most people wouldn't want to release, we call it the, cor the torsional restraint. That would basically allow your member to rotate about its own axis, which I don't believe is very common. However, the y and z axis releases are more frequently used, so those are turned on by default. And we would just need to click on the member ends to apply these releases. We also have the option between a full or a percent release. And there's more details on that within SRM's help system. And if I just wanted to click on a single member end, I could just do that by left clicking using this MY and MZ release and click just on one member end. And you can see I have this crescent moon shape representing the release on that member end. I could do the other end as well. If I want to remove it, I can just left click again. I can also left click and drag across the entire structure. And if I want to get rid of them, I can hold down the control button and left click and drag to get rid of them. I'm going to re-add them here. And if we want to change the view of our releases, because sometimes it's hard to see which members are released and in which degrees of freedom when we just have this crescent moon shape, we have an option under the options menu. We can toggle on the option to view our releases differently. So if I click on this option, now we can see the degree of freedom that's released. The degree of freedom is represented by a double arrowhead in that axis of the local coordinate system. So this is showing me the Y and Z axis uh, for a moment is being released at each end of the beam. So none of these beams will transfer any moment to their neighbors.